up YouTube back at it with another video uh, today we're gonna have to replace the O2 sensor and the cat in the Chevy truck so what I end up doing is buying the O2 sensor right here it was 22 bucks for this one there's the part number and everything you open it up So this is what the O2 sensor looks like. It has little slits at the end, and then it has some anti-seize on the end of it, on the threads. This one I got has a single wire, so it has a single port in the center. And then we have, we have the cat. <clears throat> this is the part number here. So this one I got from uh, Craigan. It was 300 bucks plus tax. It came out to like 340 or something with the both of them. This is 20 bucks tax and everything. So this one's Magnaflow. It's a direct replacement. So let's get this out. So as you can see, it has the, this one's 26 inches long. Um, it has the, the female end right here, the male end right here, and then if we take it out and we look through it. So if you're ever curious to see what a cat has inside of it, uh, it looks like a screen. Like the screen you have on your house. That's what it looks like, but it's all um, metal and they have platinum in them. So that way they could grab all the contaminants and stuff. Um, but the screen is intermeshed so you have a pattern going this way and a pattern going that way and it's throughout this whole uh, tube so through this whole area right here and uh, basically with that pattern keep going back and forth uh, it filters out everything and it it minimizes the light that goes through there so it's hard to see all the way through just because there's a lot of media in there and uh, that pollu that prevents uh, pollution so California legal ones 300 bucks um, you can't really buy any other ones besides the ones that say California legal or else they won't pass emissions and I think that's uh, this one's California and New York uh, compliant and it's because the how much media is in the here. stuff that's burning off in your engine so your carbon and stuff it collects it all in there okay so depending on your year make and model um, will depend on how many O2 sensors you have so I only have one uh, as far as I know and it's on the driver's side right there on the exhaust manifold um, I know for sure the 97 has four so this one's upstream uh, the 97 I believe has two upstream and uh, two between the cat area and uh, the two that are up here by the manifold um, but this one only has one on the driver's side right there and then the plug is up in this area which I already took off so if you look closely it's a little clip and you just lift up on that little tab there and then pull out and then unscrew it so and then unscrew it down at the bottom right there on the exhaust manifold itself Okay, so this is the old one after it's been taken out. It's, it looks okay, but as you can see from the heat, it has some discoloration. Um, but this needed to get replaced. One thing to remember is when taking out the O2 sensor, you're going to need a socket that's like this. It's a special O2 socket and a 3 8 drive. So what this socket allows you to do is slip the wire in between here and then it slides into the actual uh, the on the nut itself that's on the O2 sensor so the hex portion of it and then you could uh, take it off but without this you won't be able to get a socket on there you could use a wrench but it may uh, strip out your 
um, hex portion on the actual O2 sensor itself. So what you want to do is hand tight the O2 sensor on until it's snug and then uh, make sure your uh, wire is not tangled up. So straighten that back out and then take that socket the socket right here and slide it over this so slide it into the actual wire itself slide it over it and then uh, tighten it so your torque values are going to be based on uh, your actual your make and model and uh, you want to torque that down to whatever the manufacturer recommendations are and then all you do is take your your wire and then reattach it to the connector back here so you just plug it back in and then it's done okay so to replace the cat as we move along come in to the white pipe area so that's the front of the vehicle and then as you can see this is the white pipe this is the driver's side this is the passenger side as you look up you'll see uh, this U uh, bolt and uh, to take this one off it's a 15 millimeter make sure you have a, uh, a deep socket because of the stud regular socket won't clear the stud so you need a deep socket do not use an impact socket because they're slightly longer and as you can see with the um, the pan in the way you only have a limited amount of room to actually uh, get in there with your uh, setup with your tools um, so you'll take this one off and then there's one on the top side and then as you go over this way you'll see another two so as you can see there's another two right there take those off and then your whole cat will come off as a unit um, you'll you might have to take off any of these hangers in this area so you might have to take off some hangers um, so that way you could kind of drop the pipe down and uh, get this removed but first we'll start off with the u-bolts and get those taken care of Okay, so as you can see, there's right in here, okay, so, so right in here, right here, you have like this little tab and a cut in the exhaust pipe, so the, the tab and uh, the exhaust pipe where they meet, it has to slide that way, horizontally in that direction. Same with the front, it, it all has to slide out towards the back. So, when looking at your stuff, uh, what you want to look at is your uh, mounting brackets. So as you can see, this one has that much room, this much room to slide in that direction. Uh, this one's welded so keep that in mind so since it's welded you know it will shift that way but this is also riveted onto here so you can't really take this off unless you slide it forward towards the uh, front end of the car but they give you enough leeway there to slide it back in order to clear this so now you got to go further down and uh, look for another mount to see if it has enough clearance and as you can see, let's see if I can get this frame. So as you can see right there too. So as you can see right there too, you have enough clearance there to slide back. Um, this one does, however, have uh, bolts you could take off. So it has three bolts right there that you could take off. Uh, so that's another option, but we know that it has enough room 
to make its way backwards so we don't want to start there yet um, there's another bolt right there on the top that you could loosen up too so you can see the nut let's see if I could get that lit up for you so you see that head right there on that uh, perpendicular mount that's perpendicular to the exhaust there's a nut on the other side I believe that's welded in place but this one does have enough room to slide towards the rear on the hanger so we don't want to start there and then when you come all the way to the back since my, I have a side exhaust uh, there's another hanger back here that as you can see it has a little bit of space to slide backwards so so if you look up close you'll see that the gap right here is very minimal on that exhaust hanger so what I did was I took out this bolt I'm gonna drop it down and then I'm gonna slide everything this way so I'm gonna slide it to the rear and then that should allow me to drop this whole exhaust that direction and uh, have enough clearance to pull out the cat. So let's get that done. So here's the old cat. It's extremely heavy compared to the, the new cat. And uh, what I had to do first of all is cut it with the sawzall to get the male end out of the female that's attached to the uh, muffler in. And then I used a die grinder and I gave a, a relief cut across the bottom so that way this would easily work its way out. Uh, this was extremely hard to get out. Uh, it's almost like it bonded itself over the years, 190,000 miles on this original cat. So it bonded itself to the um, current pipe that's in there and then if you want to know what this looks like on the inside as you can see it's not a straight shot all the way through this weight is equivalent to I don't know if you ever picked up a sandbag or a, a cement bag this one feels like it's about that weight or slightly heavier maybe it's because everything kind of um, burned out on the inside and kind of turned into soot and over time just collected the carbon buildup um, but this thing's extremely heavy it's I would say it's at least maybe 30 to 50 pounds um, and the other one's probably like a third that if that so this is a extreme weight reduction when I installed the new one okay so what we got here is the top and then this has some writing at the other end of it. Um, it has double arrows, so that means that it goes in either direction. But you wanna make sure that this is facing up towards your floorboard. When setting it down, you can see the size difference. Uh, this tube basically takes, from this point to this point, takes up this area. And I could lift this one up a one. 